Andrescu. I'm the senior security engineer at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, and we've been having a lot of fun getting Bro up and running over the past year or so on our network. And as I previously mentioned, we've really been focusing on automation and uh, trying to not have too many emails uh, bug us during the day. Uh, and one of the new features in Bro 2.2 is the exec module, um, which really gives you some extra capabilities in terms of running commands, getting the output, and uh, really extending what you could previously do. So previously there was this function in Bro called system, which as you might imagine calls the system function of the OS. You give it a command, it runs that command, it uh, grabs any output, and throws it into bro's standard error.log file. Um, and the issue with this is that bro can't really do anything with this. Uh, so you have all this great output, and it's going in the log file. It doesn't even have timestamps or anything else. So if there is an error, you don't know exactly when it happened. Um, and you don't even know if your program succeeded or not. Um, that being said, we were able to successfully use this function to do some integration. Uh, so we block malicious IPs that are scanning us, uh, that are that are sending us weird SIP traffic, and um, and, and we also use some geo IP location uh, information to really drive these decisions about how long they stay blocked for, and and that's really just an API call that we make. Um, we can also create incidents, and we we don't have a SEM, but I know other people are kind of. Uh, using this to send a subset of their data to a SEM, since most, since a lot of SEMs can't handle all the bro logs, um, and really this is so useful that our bro cluster has 46 workers, probably way more proxies than we need, one manager, and it actually has one node that all it does is it monitors our barnyard logs. Uh, so unfortunately, we're still running Snort because we haven't moved all the detections over into bro yet, um, and I. I kind of searched around for something that would let me take actions when I saw certain snort alerts come up and use some intelligence to drive the decisions and I knew that certain signatures I wanted to just block or notify the owner of the IP or whatever and I really didn't find anything that worked too well so I ended up saying well I have all this automation pre-built into bro I might as well just use that so I, I have this one little node that's not doing much and is just watching for a few signature IDs and when it sees them it goes and does the right thing. Um, so as a quick review, and I guess there's another presentation on this, but if you remember from last season of Bro Exchange, and that doesn't really show up as well as I hoped, um, there was this thing called the input framework in 2.1. Uh, and the input framework gives you a way to read uh, data either as an event stream or into a Bro table. Um, and it comes with a few readers, uh, and it really drives things like the Intel framework where you can read in some data and then monitor your DNS traffic or HTTP traffic for those indicators. Um, and really this is the, the perfect pairing for getting better output back from this uh, exec module. And this is uh, all in one file in the base utils directory. It defines this exec module and all it has is really this one function. Uh, the, the run function, which takes a command and returns a result. Uh, and it just calls the command line. Uh, and this is an asynchronous function, uh, so it'll just kind of run by itself. And then whenever it's ready, your bro script will, will continue on. Uh, so the command record, you have a command line that you want to execute. And that's just a string. Uh, you have the option of providing it some standard input. Um, and then it has this cool feature where if you want to read some additional files, uh, whenever the command is finished executing, you can give it a set of strings, and then whenever it prepares the result for you, it will also give you the contents of those files. So if you have a command that doesn't necessarily re return stuff to standard out, uh, but modify some files, you can, you can uh, get those back into your bro script. And of course, like most other bro things, it actually also has a unique ID, so you can so bro can kind of track the execution of it, and, and you don't really need to worry about that. But. And then the result object that it returns, um, it gives you the exit code from the program, tells you whether or not the program was killed off by a signal or was term terminated by a signal, 
Um, and then it gives you this vector of string. And all this does is it kind of, it, it gives you each line of the standard output that your bro script can then iterate through and process. And it does the same thing with standard error. Um, and if you gave it some files to read, it'll also return this table with the contents of those files. Um, so this is all pretty straightforward, but it's also really powerful in what it lets you do. Um, so just to kind of do a quick example here, uh, we need to load the, the exec module. And then because it's asynchronous, we need to use this when construct. Um, and all, all that does is that whenever the inside portion of it completes, uh, then it will just con continue on to the block of code. So here, uh, I'm creating this local result variable, just setting it equal to the output of the exec run function. And all I'm doing is giving it the command argument and just the ls temp. And whenever that's done executing, uh, I'll just print out the result. So what this actually looks like when you're running it, it tells us our exit code ls succeeded, it seems. Uh, it wasn't killed off by a signal, and standard output, we have this vector of two directory names. Uh, we didn't have standard error, and we didn't tell it to read any files, and if we just want to quickly verify, those are in fact the two directories that we had in temp. To actually get this to run in standalone bro, you have to do, you, you have to add a bit of code. Just you need to load that policy frameworks communication listen element, and then uh, if you don't have that terminate, it'll just kind of keep listening for connections. So all this does whenever the when construct finishes, print the result, and then it'll just terminate for us. So as I mentioned, we've previously been able to do a lot of stuff we need and kind of just spray and pray, fire and forget, hope that our script works and that everything is happening correctly on the background, in the background. Now we can actually verify the IP blocks that we're putting in. We can see how long in, until we can no longer trace route to that IP or whatever. Um, we can uh, take our integration a bit further, and uh, we, if we go create a ticket, maybe we want to have that as a field in our notice.log, or maybe we want to have an email to the ticket in the, in the notification email that gets sent out uh, so that we can easily pivot between those two. Uh, we can also use this to inform the actions that we want to take. Um, so maybe we want to check to see if the host or the user has a history of being compromised, and maybe if they do, we want to go ahead and suspend them instead of just notify them. Um, we can check to see if the, if the user is a VIP, if they're a student, we can kick them off the network, or if they're a faculty member, they'll probably complain and we want to be a bit more careful with. Um, or in just integrating it with other tools of Identity Finder to see if the system has uh, any sensitive data on it, and we might want to, you know, go ahead and suspend it immediately instead of wait to, instead of erring on uh, just notification. So some other cool things that we can do with this is kind of integrate this into our vulnerability scanning framework. Um, so we have this log known services function provided by the known services policy script. And we can, and each time Bro sees a, a system running a new service, it'll call this event, and this should only get called once per day per service. So if we just kind of want to monitor for new services and scan each service independently instead of scanning all of our IP space, um, we can use this event and kind of target scan only the things we're interested in. So say that we're, we care about people running remote desktop. Uh, we can check to see if the port number that's being seen is equal to the 3389 on TCP. If it's not, we'll just go ahead and return out of this function. And we can build a command um, using Nessus, and they have this plugin for checking to see if the system is vulnerable to the MS1220 vulnerability. And um, we'll just go ahead and put in the IP instead of that percent %s. So we have our when block. Again, we define our, local, our result variable. And we're just running uh, as the command, uh, the command previously defined, replacing the percent %s with the actual IP that we want to scan for. Um, 
And then again, we're going to get a vector of strings as the result, so we need to iterate through those. And the way that this Nessus script works is it has success in the output if, um, if it's actually vulnerable to this. Uh, and if it is vulnerable to it, then we just go ahead and print this out. You probably don't want to actually print this out, but you want to kick off a notice and maybe have an, a certain action that gets hand, uh, associated with the notice. Um, but really, you know, this is all it takes to start doing some more in-depth uh, detections. And uh, I mean, especially as people move to IPv6, you're not, it's a lot harder to scan your v6 subnets. But now that Bro is seeing the connections and knows what's listening on what ports, you can really use this to pinpoint what you want to scan. So another use case is some malware that maybe is uh, recently emerging, uh, not a lot known about it. Of course, Bro has the Team Comrie malware hash registry out of the box. Um, but maybe you want to detect some lesser known malware, some new malware that hasn't gotten in there yet for whatever reason. Um, or maybe you want to look for files that the Team Comrie mal malware hash registry doesn't have. Maybe it's a Word document, a PDF, whatever. Um, so one thought I had about this was that usually I, I get a lot of my news about new weird malware from security blogs. Uh, so one option is to just kind of take the MD5 hash from the files framework and go out to Google and search blogs to see if people are talking about this hash for some reason. Um, so this is a simple script that uses the hash all files policy uh, from the files framework. And as the name implies, that will just start hashing all the files it sees. Um, and it provides this file hash event. Uh, for this, I'm really only interested in searching on MD5 hashes. So if it's not an MD5 hash, I don't care. I'm just going to quit out of this. And Google actually has a uh, blog search option. Uh, so I have this URL, which will just go out and search things that Google identifies as blogs. And of course, Google doesn't like it when you have a wget or a curl user agent, so I'm faking a user agent here. Um, and then Google also likes to return everything in one or two lines, so you know there's some extra <coughs> grepping and cleaning this up to really get to maybe just the titles of the page and the descriptions of the page. Um, and so I have this command that I build by just running curl. Uh, putting the hash into my URL, faking my user agent, and then cleaning it up. Um, again, I'm just going to run this. And I'm going to go through, and I'm going to see if there's malware in the name of any of the search results. And maybe I want to get notified on this and do some more digging. Um, and it, it's a bit clunky with the user agent stuff, where I have that backslash quote uh, and, and, and the URL. Um, so there is this str shell escape function that you can use, uh, which will escape back to quote, uh, backslash, and dollar sign. Um, so if you don't want to have to deal with anything, you just wrap your command in this, and, and it just takes care of it for you. So there, there's some also some other modules which are closely related to the exact module. Uh, so one of these is active HTTP. Um, which, as the name implies, will just go out to an HTTP request and give you the reply. If we weren't doing all the weird cleanup of the Google results, we could have just used the active HTTP module before. Uh, it has this request function. It takes a request, and it gives you a response. And the request has a number of uh, elements to it, the URL, the method, any client data if you're doing a post request, uh, the maximum time to wait for a response, and you can even give it additional arguments into curl. Um, and the response will give you the status code, the message, the, uh, the uh, body, and, and any headers. And on a similar note, there's the dir uh, module, which allows you to register a directory to monitor for new files. And, um, and then you can just act on new files as they pop up on your file system. And it has this monitor function. You give it a directory. And you give it a callback function. And that function takes the file name as an argument. Um, and then you could use the input framework to actually read the contents of the file. And, uh, and you can even tell it how often to pull. Um, 
So any questions so far? I mean, th these are, okay. Okay. Um, so this monitored function kind of just sits in the background polling, and then it will just call your callback function whenever there's a new file. Right, but except it just uses the, the callback. Ah, sorry. So the question was if the active HTTP and the dir module are also asynchronous. Uh, yes, um, and except that the dir module just calls the callback instead of doing the, the weird when construct. Any other questions? Okay. Yep. For the uh, Google answer you were talking about, mm -hmm. did you do a bunch of like, YouTube questions? Like so I think I ran it like once every 10 seconds as I was trying to get that strip crud function working, and I kept running it for a few minutes, and they didn't block me yet. So, <laughs> um, so, you're, not, so you're not suggesting people run this on like, large amounts of black traffic? Only if you have a big swath of IPs. And Google supports V6. <laughs> so. This is really an argument for just routing v6 to Google, and then, then you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you build bro script files with this and then load them into bro? Um, so you could run bro standalone pretty easily with, with, uh, with, with a script that you built. Unless you run it in an another bro instance in uh, standalone yeah. mode. I'd be fascinated but to find out why you want to have this write a bro script. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I think with really the, these three modules, uh, a lot of the earlier discussion from the panel about you know active response and what do you want to do, I think all those could really be doable with this. I think Ashish needs to find a game developer, but there's nothing in bro kind of stopping this from working. Um, the the one caveat is that you do need your whatever function you call with the uh, with the exact module you do need it to finish before you get the output back. So you can't just sit there, you know, tailing dash f a file and and keep getting the new line each time. But that's what the input module is for. No matter how much Vlad wants that feature, it's not there yet. I forget why I wanted that, but. So uh, as some extra background, uh, you know, part of this presentation was to be about kind of crazy things you could now do with Bro, um, and and I kind of kept throwing ideas out there and kept realizing that wow, actually that that's kind of useful thing to do, and may maybe it's not that crazy. Uh, and yeah, one of them was maybe you can have an IRC bot where you like talk to Bro and ask it about what's going on in your network right now. But yeah, that, that, then you run into the issue of it not um, not being able to give you input until the process executes, but Bro does decode IRC, so if you were really wanted to do that, and Bro could see the traffic going to it, then. But yeah. And and one thing you do really want to pay attention to is this can be very dangerous if you take untrusted input, which is why Vlad had the the string telescope function there. Uh, if you're not careful and you take uh, exactly. it, it's like an SQL injection. Email or exactly.
Yeah, you probably don't want to like take shell scripts from the files framework and then start executing them or stuff like that. But, but, yeah. uh, but you know, there, there's nothing to stop you from evaling all the things if you really wanted to. But. Um, so kind of on the on the note of stupid things you could do with Bro and with the new <laughs> exec module. Um, so one of the one of the queries that I run a lot is to see uh, HTTP traffic. And, and, and any plain text credentials that we see. Uh, and we do see a lot of people sending their university credentials over plain text HTTP. And I've always been tempted to see what, if those are actually their university credentials or if there are other credentials or if I can just SSH back into the originating host and, and see if those credentials work. Um, there, there's a handy script that lets you order pizza from the command line. So I, I was thinking of ways to kind of give a positive feedback loop to people. So wow, you run you ran Windows updates this year. You you, you get a free pizza. <laughs> um, and and this is another kind of crazy idea that I thought of that <laughs> became useful. Um, there there's a web API that lets you make phone calls, and handily enough, it lets you spoof the caller ID to whatever you want. And it has a text to speech engine and everything else, so you could have Bro call you, and then you can like press buttons to get the input back. And then I realized, wait, that's actually a really good paging system. So Bro will block something or notify on something depending on what digits I type into my phone. Uh, and of course, if people are still running NetSend then, or Windows messaging, that, then you can just tell them that maybe, 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 maybe they should stop. But. Um, so that's really all I had. Again, these are kind of straightforward frameworks, but they really, or not even frameworks, modules, but they really do give you a lot of capability in terms of integrating and adding metadata to your decisions um, and, and just weird things you can do with Bro. So a any other questions?